Hi, today we're going to take a look at two different atmospheric plasma discharges. This is the silent discharge and the arc discharge. There's a third method that's equally often used for technical applications at atmospheric pressure, which is the corona plasma, but we're likely going to make a video on that sometime later. Today we're going to focus on the first two ones and for that essentially it's important to know that plasma is an ionized gas. We made uh, another video earlier uh, where we explain about ionized gases, about what plasmas are and why this is interesting to uh, a lot of different technical applications. If you haven't seen that, I'm going to put the video in the description below. As an ionized gas, the easiest way to ignite a plasma is by using high electric fields, so by using high voltages. And in the first bit we're going to take a look what happens if we apply high voltage to two different electrodes and see what's happening then if the discharge ignite, ignites. One notice beforehand though, um, if you're not specifically trained in safely handling high voltages then please do not try this at home because there's obviously dangers involved with that. So, to the first experiment. Not surprisingly, an arc is ignited if we apply the high voltage and of course it ignites at the shortest distance between the electrodes and then raises up because of the elevated temperatures, because it's heating the gas. A simple method to probe the high voltages or the high electric fields surrounding the electrodes is using this simple voltage tester. As you can see clearly, the small glow lamp inside lights up if we bring in, if we narrow in the tip towards the electrodes. That's indicating that indeed the voltages are quite high, so in this case approximately 11,000 volts. A better method to probe these uh, voltages and these electric fields surrounding this, of course, is using an oscilloscope and we use this small DIY oscilloscope and two tips that we bring in with a, a defined distance. So. Uh, the oscilloscope is measuring the voltage in between the, the two tips. You can see it's only displaying electric fields if the device is turned on, of course. Now, it's a bit hard to read, so in the next setting we're gonna take a look a little bit closer into the oscilloscope while one tip rests near the device and one tip rests on the table. These electric arcs usually are relatively hot. It's for good reason that uh, arcs are used for electric welding of metals. And of course that's not always the best option for technical applications of plasmas. And there's a very simple modification of the setup in order to get a very cold plasma that we can use for much more and much different applications than these kind of hot arcs. This other method is called a dielectric barrier discharge or a silent discharge and the reason for those two names is on one hand it's much more silent than the arc that's relatively noisy indeed um, and on the other hand um, it's very simple to set up just introducing a dielectric barrier and this means just an insulating material in between the electrodes. So let's take a look at that. Here we have the same setup as before and as mentioned we will now um, change from the arc to this different discharge, to this barrier discharge and in this case I'm using a simple glass slide that I'm introducing in between the electrodes and see how uh, at the whole length of the, of the glass slide um, a discharge lights up that looks somewhat differently. This works also with a plastic sheet so this is some um, polyacrylic sheet from uh, from the construction market. And here's with the lights turned off, just to show you the differences between the arcs that's now rising, and then taking again the glass sheet and placing the glass sheet in green. You see how on the whole length of the glass sheet this barrier discharge is lighting up and just as well with a, a polyacrylic a polymer sheet, again a, a silent discharge is uh, igniting on the whole length of the electrodes. 
So how does this work? Well, usually if we just have the electrodes and we apply this high voltage, then uh, as soon as the voltage rises above the breakdown voltage of the air, so the, the maximum voltage that uh, the, the air can withstand over a certain distance, then of course we get ionization and we get um, the ignition of this uh, electric discharge. If there's just the electrons in the air in between, then by ionizing the air, the air becomes conductive. And so there's a uh, short circuit between the electrodes, which passes the whole energy that we created in the, the power supply between the electrodes and thus heats the air very much and creates much more ionization. And um, like that, then the, the first part that gets ionized contracts into this one dense arc um, where all the energy is transferred into. That's different if we introduce an isolating material. So again, the voltage rises so high that the air begins to ionize, but due to this glass or plastic or whatever um, insulating material in between, we cannot get a short circuit. There cannot uh, be direct electrical conductance between the, the two electrodes, um, rather um, just the, the discharge on the two sides of this dielectric material, of this insulating material. And since we are not having a short circuit and we're not extracting so much energy from the uh, from the electrodes, then the voltage levels stay very high. Um, and that's the reason that now for these uh, cases when we have the glass or the polymer sheet introduced between the electrodes, in that cases, the plasma ignites on the whole area of these uh, dielectric sheets, on the, on the whole area between those electrodes. Let's take a look what this means for the energy and the resulting gas temperatures. So this is some regular kitchen paper and if we put this kitchen paper together and hold it into the arc then as we would expect it, uh, if it touches the arc it catches fire because this uh, gas discharge is so hot. If however we use our glass sheet or a plastic sheet, put this in between the electrodes and then bring in the kitchen paper, it won't catch fire. We can put it directly in and can even feed it between the electrodes so it's completely um, touching the discharges and still it's not catching fire because the gas is so much colder. And this is exactly the principle that we know from these popular plasma balls. These spheres work after exactly the same principle, uh, having the high voltage contact in the middle, having a glass sheet covering it and uh, then having the outer um, ball as the, the second electrode. So this is the same thing and so we can again use our voltage tester to see um, the potentials. So of course the glow lamp lights up if we narrow it in on the high voltage electrodes on our device, but just as well if we narrow it in um, with the uh, plasma sphere. Even if uh, the power supply is switched off, still the plasma sphere clearly lights up the glow lamp inside the voltage tester. An even better way of probing the electric fields, of course, is again with the oscilloscope. So again, as we knew, high electric fields from the arc discharge, but just as well we find high electric fields if we narrow this into the plasma sphere. And just to prove, so the high electric fields are still there if we switch off the arc. and they're gone if we switch off the plasma sphere. So this is clearly high electric field strength coming from a high voltage present inside this plasma sphere. Since we have high voltage fields from both of these devices, of course we can also um, see how those two interact. And as you will notice, if I narrow in the plasma globe, then uh, on one hand the, the sound of the uh, arc changes a little bit. But even more so, we see that the behavior is changing uh, slightly, the behavior of the discharges. So I'll turn off the light to see this better. You can see how these, uh, how these arcs actually interact with the high voltage field from the plasma globe and how they are trying to avoid these high voltage fields. And the same thing actually is also true for the plasma sphere where the discharge changes slightly its form 
in this case really just slightly because of the, the small dimensions that we have. Okay, so let's take a short look at the setup that we are having and this is a quite typical one where you find lots of instructables or other videos on YouTube where people explain how they set up similar things. You'll also find construction details on the, this setup that we used here on our GitHub site. So I'm going to paste the link uh, below in the description for you about that. But let's take a quick overview how this is being done. Setup takes 220 volts from the power grid, has an on off switch, and then uses a commercial uh, fluorescent tube driver in order to um, drive those uh, high voltage transformer. And from the high voltage transformer, one side is taken back to the ground connection, and this is the side that's also connected to the left electrode. The second side, which is our high voltage side, is connected to the right electrode. Here's a small variation of the setup. Overall it's similar, but now we're using a rectified uh, flyback transformer, typical line output transformer. So this is now with DC voltage, uh, but at higher uh, voltage levels, at much higher electric field strength. And so you see the discharge in principle is uh, possible to ignite at higher length, at higher uh, inter-electrode distances but it's behaving slightly different from what we saw before. So this high voltage transformer that's rectified is the reason that it's now behaving somewhat different. On one hand, we're, we're seeing that the, the arc is barely raising upwards, barely moving uh, to the top of the, the electrodes. Um, and it also has a uh, has an influence on the behavior if we try to have this silent discharge, this dielectric barrier discharge. So as you can see with the glass, the, uh, the discharge simply stops. There's no silent discharge igniting. Also with the plastic sheet, we see if we put it in between, the arc is burning, that's all right. But if we put the plastic sheet in between, nothing happens. So again, And this is even better to see if we turn off the light. So there you see the arc is there and it's nicely burning. Now we take the glass sheet again and try to put the glass sheet in between. And unlike before, the discharge simply stops. Can we ignite it if we take out the glass sheet, take the plastic sheet, plastic material. Oops, so there it almost burned a bit, but it doesn't ignite this uh, silent discharge. Let's take a look again with our oscilloscope um, in order to see how these electric fields are behaving. So here's the oscilloscope. Taking again the two tips. And the discharge. Then, if we take a close look, then we see that those spikes all go in the same direction. They all go upwards. It's always going down to zero field strength uh, when the uh, discharge, when the arc ignites, and then before it ignites, it's elevating always in the same direction because it's a rectified transformer. And so this is uh, not usable, not possible to do for the silent discharge, but very useful for the arc. So I hope you found this interesting and informative. If you have any questions or anything that I have not made clear enough in the video, please uh, leave all this in the comments below. And stay tuned for the next video that we're already preparing.